Hello, this is video number six for module seven. And in this video, we're going to talk about some of the transacting factors that are involved in binding to enhancers. So let's take a look at the outline here. Three main topics are mediators, activators, and repressors. And all of these are involved in um, modulating gene expression from promoters the activators and repressors are proteins that are able to directly bind to enhancers. And they can recruit um, other proteins. For an activator, this would be called a co-activator. For a repressor, it would be called a co-repressor. And the mediators are involved in allowing the proteins assembled on the enhancer to also affect how um, the promoter is um, activity at the promoter. So let's take the activators and repressors first, and we'll work the mediators into the conversation. All right, this, this slide shows um, basic structure of activators and repressors. Remember, for both of these, they're involved in binding to the enhancer. And both activators and repressors have two domains as part of their protein structure. They both have a DNA binding domain <clears throat> because remember, one of the activities that they have is they bind to the enhancer DNA structure. In addition to that, they have either an activation domain for activators or a repression domain for repressors. And that domain is gonna be involved in somehow influencing the rate of transcription from the promoter. Now, activators and repressors can be monomers, one protein subunit, or they can be dimers. So that's another feature of their structure. Well, let's start with activators. Um, so how do they carry out their uh, function? An activator itself is a protein that binds to the enhancer. And uh, one way that an activator can increase the rate of transcription from a promoter is uh, shown on this slide. <clears throat> there are two main ways. First one on this slide and the second one is shown on the next slide. So what this is showing is a promoter region of a gene. Here is the transcription start site and bound to the promoter are the basal transcription factors. Tata binding protein, um, Tata binding protein associated factors and RNA polymerase 2. And um, here is an enhancer. Remember, enhancers can be enhancers can be distant from the promoter. And this has an activator bound to the enhancer. So one way that activators can increase the rate of transcription from a promoter is if the DNA molecule bends such that the enhancer can bind to either directly or indirectly, the um, basal transcription factors. If the activator binds and stabilizes these factors, then the basal um, complex is going to be more stable, allowing RNA polymerase to continually bind and, that, and thus elevating the rate of transcription in that way. Stabilizing the basal factors means there's always a landing site for RNA polymerase, and it can transcribe at a very high rate. Now, this is showing the mediator as well. So mediators, in some cases, the way an activator is able to bind to these basal factors is by itself, but in other cases, it, re it um, requires this um, sort of a mediator protein that's going to bridge contact between the activator and the basal factors. Okay, so that's one way activators can stimulate the transcription rate from a promoter. Here's a second way. Um, so another way is through the enhancer binding to the activator protein, which then in turn binds to a co-activator. The co-activator itself is not capable of binding the enhancer, but it can bind to an activator protein that's bound to an enhancer. What does a co-activator do? Well, there are two good examples of co-activators. One is a um, protein that uh, has 
enzymatic activity which can add acetyl groups to histone proteins. So this is a histone acetyltransferase enzyme, CAT enzyme. This type of coactivator, when it acetylates histones in uh, nucleosomes, basically clears nucleosomes away from the promoter. And now the promoter is open and uh, able to interact with basal factors. Okay. A second way that a coactivator can um, act is by actively removing um, chromatin uh, histone proteins from the promoter through um, ATP-powered displacement of the histones. So um, this way is clearing the way for the promoter to bind to the basal transcription factors, and that's going to elevate the rate of transcription from the promoter. Okay, so activators can work either by themselves to stabilize binding of basal transcription factors and increase the rate of transcription by RNA polymerase II, or they can work through a coactivator to clear away histones from the promoter. And there are a couple of different ways that that can happen. Um, and this slide is just summarizing the role of mediator proteins, what they do. Um, so there are a whole set of different mediator proteins, and they're just bid bridging the um, the binding, I guess you could say, between the basal transcription factors and the activator protein bound to the enhancer. All right, what are two? What do transcription repressors do? Well, repressors have a DNA binding domain, and they bind directly to the enhancer. And then uh, all repressors work by binding to co-repressors. So this is similar for the activator binding a co-activator. Um, but co um, repressors always bind co-repressors. Well, what does the co-repressor and repressor complex do? So there are two main ways that co-repressors work as well. So um, co-repressors bound to repressors can uh, physically block binding of RNA polymerase or the basal transcription factors to, to the promoter. And that blocking will um, obviously slow down or completely eliminate transcription from that promoter. Um, other co-repressors can modify histones such that the um, promoter is buried in, it's obscured by nucleosomes sitting on the promoter. One such um, type of co-repressor is called a histone methyl transferase, which methylates histones and causes them to pack tightly on the, on the um, promoter. So these are illustrated here. Here is an enhancer bound to a repressor and co-repressor. This, this combination is going to physically block binding of the basal factors to the promoter, and it's going to prevent transcription from this promoter. Here's the second way, repressor and co-repressor. This co-repressor is a histone methyl transferase, which causes very tight um, compaction of histones, uh, nucleosomes on the promoter. And now the promoter is not accessible for binding by the uh, basal transcription factors. All right, so let's switch and talk a little bit more uh, about enhancers in general. So we talked about the nuts and bolts of how they work, um, but uh, what's their importance in regulating gene expression? So I have a few slides to illustrate that. So one thing that enhancers can do, there are many different types of enhancers, and um, many genes, most genes, have multiple enhancers. Uh, and a given enhancer can confer tissue or cell type specific uh, expression of, of a gene. Um, <clears throat> and that's because in different types of cells, those cells are equipped with different types of activators or repressors. So uh, let's use the example of um, eye cells versus skin cells. Um, and a gene that maybe has two different enhancers one that specifically directs expression in an eye, and the other um, in the skin cells. How would that look? Um, so let's uh, go on and take a look at that. 
So uh, let's look at the, the bottom two examples here. Let's take the example of an eye uh, cell and a skin cell. And this is a gene that has a skin-specific enhancer and an eye-specific enhancer. In the eye cell, there are activators represented by the green shapes here that can bind to the eye enhancer. Those activator proteins are going to stimulate transcription from this promoter, and it, the gene will be expressed in eyes. In a skin, we don't have these type of activators. Um, so it's not going to activate expression using these activators, but there will be a different set of activators that will be able to bind to the skin enhancer. And it will be expressed also in skin cells. Um, <clears throat> so that's illustrating how a given gene with two different types of enhancers can be expressed in two different tissues or cell types based on the specific and um, activator proteins that are present in those two cell types. Um, there also can be, uh, for a given type of cell, an eye here in two different um, phases of the cell cycle, G1 versus S phase, there can be different um, activators or repressors present at different times, such that uh, the gene can be on during one phase of the cell cycle because it only has activators. In another phase of the cell cycle, however, it has repressors, and the repressors are going to um, predominate in turning off expression of the gene. So activators can direct both cell type specific expression and time specific expression, depending on the different types of um, activators and repressors that are able to bind to that specific enhancer. Um, now, you can determine whether a, an enhancer has a cell type specific expression capability by doing the following experiment. If you take an enhancer from a gene and you put it into a um, recombinant DNA construct called a reporter gene, um, so you would um, put this enhancer next to a gene that's going to report and be easily to, easy, easy to detect. And this gene, this enhancer can act on the promoter for this gene um, if it has activators that are able to bind to it in a particular place. So let's say you take an enhancer and you hook it up to a reporter gene for a protein called green fluorescent protein. Okay. Um, if you now put this into a mouse, you make a mouse, put it into a mouse embryo such that all the cells in the mouse have this reporter gene. And um, you ask the question, does this enhance or direct expression of the reporter gene in any particular tissue? Um, what you will find is <clears throat> in most cells, you'll have this situation. The, activate, the enhancer will not be directing high-level expression of the reporter gene, green fluorescent protein. However, in, in uh, tissues that have activators that are capable of binding to this enhancer, um, that will direct specific high-level expression, producing a lot of mRNA and a lot of green fluorescent protein. Um, <clears throat> And you can actually see this in a mouse if you um, shine a, a um, laser on the mouse, you can see cells in the eye expressing high level of green fluorescent protein. Here's another example of, a, of an enhancer that directs brain specific expression put into a frog embryo. And you can see that green fluorescent protein is um, is present by the fluorescence seen in the brain of the developing frog embryo. All right, um, so I think I'll end this video here. Um, and just to summarize, enhancers are cis-acting regulatory DNA elements. They can bind to activators, which are 
going to increase the rate of transcription from a nearby promoter, or repressors, which will decrease, basically shut off expression from a nearby promoter. And both of those can uh, work in, in different ways through co-activators or co-repressors. Genes, most genes have multiple enhancers, and these enhancers can give those genes tissue or cell type specific expression or even time specific expression. All right, um, so the next video will dis we'll discuss one other uh, mechanism of eukaryotic gene regulation, and that's through um, um, epigenetic modification of DNA molecules. See ya.